All right, welcome to the Focus Podcast. This is episode 32 with my guest, Marcus Walker. Welcome. Hello, thank you. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Uh, amidst the TTC, usual oh, conundrum. started, man. <laughs> I always tell people I'm a pretty calm person, but the only thing that really boils my blood is the TTC. Mm. Oh, is really? the only thing? Well, there's a few other things. <laughs> I have, I've learned to subside it through other mediums, but that really flips my crazy switch is yeah, the TTC. It's like, holy fuck. And it's just because it's so, such, such prevention all the time. And it's just like, why did you do it like this? Mm-hmm. You shut down all these lines on this weekend, but I guess, I don't know. It's, to me, it's like technology that has to be maintained. Mm-hmm. Well, technology, like probably a hundred no. years ago, no, it's but technology. it still has, it's technology. It has to be maintained, but it's just like, it's just not, I can't withstand this city's growth anymore. It's just holding on for dear Dude, life. It's, it's, it's going to balloon for like another, at least another 10 million in the next five, 10 years. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, let's get into that. Like just, you know, as a musician living in Toronto mm. and you've seen the changes, have you always been in the West End of uh, the city? No, actually. Uh, when I first moved to Toronto, I, uh, I was uh, living at this uh, uh, this building uh, at essentially uh, Sherburne and Carlton. Okay, yeah. And at that so, time, there was like, you know, a lot of hookers around. and you Yeah, know, you're like, pulling yeah. closer, getting nope. close to the mic there. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. Sweet. Anyway. There we go. You don't have to lean in, but yeah, just a little mm-hmm. bit. Sweet. All right. Uh, yeah, so like that's, uh, if people are, aren't aware of uh, the geography of Toronto, that's like hooker central. Yeah, yeah. Around. Well, it yeah. used to be. It <laughs> yeah. isn't anymore. It's, uh, no. it's gone through a number of changes. It's still, it's still a little seedy in certain yeah. areas. Little pockets of seediness. Yeah, but for the most part, uh, at that point, uh, there was uh, there was a lot of hookers around, and also uh, up along that uh, on the street that I was on, uh, there was uh, a lot of um, um, like uh, mental health type characters, you know, living up up and down that street. Yeah, well, Sherborne is is like uh, pretty much. A blueprint of those places mm-hmm, Sherborne indeed. and and then it when it, it gets to Dundas yep. and then Queen it's like that's the T yep. of all the mental health places and then I think the I'd say almost I'm maybe I'm wrong but maybe the other um, like group of those type of places in Parkdale mm-hmm. so you have Parkdale like that yep. and then that area is kind of the same similar and then almost here too, like, but not as dense. Not as like dense. up up Kingston Road here, there's quite a few places, yeah. but not as as dense as you have downtown there because it's so close to a lot of the hospitals yep. and it's a lot of the shelters and mm-hmm. stuff like that. It's just closer to a lot of the things that are connected like mm-hmm. that. So and then, Allen Gardens is like right there. Yeah, and it just built. <laughs> I think it just became this kind of area where those people with mental problems are. It's mostly people with with mental problems are you know linger, yeah they're just <laughs> mingling about out there you would say yeah, in yeah, a yeah. nice way you know but it's, it's it's a big problem in toronto it's like it's uh it's it's everywhere mm-hmm. like it's it's i don't i don't like i don't know if you've been to a lot of the other small towns in canada post uh lockdown but it's i feel like it's uh toronto's got more of like a, a grip on that because it's maybe it's so big and you're not seeing it as in, as densely, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I think I had the the money to kind of like also clean up, like they have security to like shoo people away and stuff like that. Of and then you see it more densely in other cities like Ottawa mm-hmm. and Regina and stuff like that because mm-hmm. it's just so there's it's not as spread out as Toronto. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Um, anyways, we went off topic there. You were <laughs> mm-hmm. you were in. In the in the Sherborne area, yes, right. Sherborne so Carlton, there. yeah, and, and then, I uh, and uh, I was going to uh, Castle Frank, or what used to, what is now Rosedale Heights, yeah, um, and uh, which is where I learned uh, guitar. Now I had taken some lessons when I was like twelve. Uh, back so when is this? When are we talking? This time? Oh, it's late eighties. Oh wow, we're going way back. Nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, 
don't let the youthful appearance fool yeah, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the, yeah, I'm in the same boat. I'm, a, I grew up in the '80s in, in Dufferin and Davenport. There you go. Till about '92, and then I got out of Toronto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you were in that part in the '80s. Late '80s, yeah. Okay. Um, Toronto was a different city. Back very then. different. Mm-hmm. Did you, were you on your own then? Like no, I, well, kind of. I, I was. Uh, I came to stay with my father essentially for a little while. Okay, so what got you into music? The in Toronto kind of started got you into music, or well, no, my parents are, are both musicians. So we're so you are already, musicians. Yeah, you're it's, you're born into it's it. It's kind of yeah you know, in the genes. So you're saying you learned to play guitar. Mm-hmm. That that was that that time period. Yeah. And uh, so, what? How did that come about? Who? Uh, well, because I was going to school, and there was a great music program there. And oh, okay. And so I, I was learning guitar, and after a while, it it, it became apparent to my teacher that uh, you know, his kid's got an ear, and he's you know he's figuring out stuff. He's actually doing his homework. Yeah. And and so on and so forth. And um, uh, so I, it got to a point where my teacher uh, was like, you know, you can just you know just do your own exams. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> right. was that? Now, was there any music program in your school, or was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, was, so that's, uh, that's, that's what was got you. Technically called band. Yeah, yeah. But it was like you know, you had people who were trying on xylophone and yeah. And, and, and this clarinet. is what what age? Uh, I was uh, late teens. Yeah. So you'd be like your seventeen end of high school, pretty yeah. much, yeah. So then you knew, like, is this this is this when you knew that this is what you oh, meant? Oh, no. No, 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 not at all, eh? No. no. It I, just, so it grabbed your interest at first? Well, because I knew it was something that uh, would uh, eat up the time. Mm. And and, uh, and plus it was fun. I actually get to learn how to play yeah, Stairway yeah. to Heaven. And, yeah. And all these songs that I that I loved, you know, growing yeah. up, you know, Pink Floyd and, yeah. and so on and so forth. Um, because I didn't know anybody in Toronto other than the kids I was going to school with, right? Yeah. So yeah. a good chunk of my day was just spent practicing. Yeah, when you had the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so what got you into, uh, like, how did you start playing live? And, like, how did you become a solo musician? Ooh, that's, um, well, I mean, I'll, I'll try and condense it here, but uh, uh, something always leads to something else, right? Keep. I'm going to crack a window here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if something always leads to something else. And, uh, you know, next thing you know, you're jamming with your buddies. And then, you know, somebody hears you and they say, hey, man, uh, you want to you wanna do a show? Or, you know, you, know, you, you all know enough songs to want to, wanna, you know, put it together. And you're probably, you know, doing it for peanuts or less. <laughs> Some kids would just do it just for the, just for the hell of it, right? Just for the fun or the yeah. excitement. Yeah. 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 Um, Making money, really? What? <laughs> What's that? I would have paid you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What was, where was your first gig in Toronto? My first gig was at uh, Dave's Pizzeria, oh. which was up on St. Clair and um, St. Clair and uh, Christie area. Okay. So I, I kind of spent a lot of time up there uh, in the 80s. There you go. Because I had a friend who grew up at uh, Christie and Davenport. Mm-hmm. So I would be back and forth between there and Lansdowne. Interesting. I went to school at Regal Road there. Okay. On uh, Dufferin nice. or Davenport yeah. on the hill there. Yeah. And then I went to um, Winona on... Um, yeah, I know Winona. Yeah. So yeah. Winona was cool because it was... My, my mom... And another friend of mine, his mom, they were really into our school. Like, they were involved a lot mm-hmm. in our school uh, when we were um, from, like, grade one to, f- to four. Or one to six. And uh, my mom, they got involved with, uh, I don't know how they got in with the people at Winona. Because mm-hmm. it's, like, very kind of artsy rich mm-hmm. people went there mm-hmm. and we weren't in that class no. <laughs> so we i don't know how my mom we got us in and i got in and it was a, like it was pretty cool school because it had like an olympic sized pool so right you had on. like so you had like a pool day every day nice so you're in the pool every day nice that's awesome also you had an art home room mm-hmm. so there was either music or theater yep 
and I did theater, and it was all we did was sketches. Yep. All we did was like improv. Yep. And in the, at that time, I was going to school, and Living Color was like the shit. It was the shit. So yeah, yeah. all we did was talk about a Living Color uh-huh. and did like sketches. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So, Interesting. Yeah, it was fun. And then um, after that, I moved out of Toronto, but it was, um, yeah, it was pretty cool how it was like you can pick this art major, and there's all these art. Mm-hmm. Everything was so based around art. A fruitful time for yeah. you. Yeah, right? and and there was a lot of also like um, hands-on art classes, and yep. so every day you were involved in some sort of creative aspect. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Place. Nice. So yeah, and uh, then I went to high school in Newmarket, and it was like you're all the same. You're all just streamed. I was that first year of just streamed, and it was just like. Maybe we should have challenged them a little bit. <laughs> Maybe we should have made them work a little bit, because uh, us, the Generation X, we didn't we didn't come out too. Uh... Mm-hmm. <laughs> the the, uh, the there was a, a certain type of character that, that would go to a school at, at North York, and and they've grown up to be kind of what I call Muskoka boys. Mm. You know the type I'm talking about. I know Muskoka boys. Oh yeah. They yeah. Uh, you know they all they're all kind of fashion like uh, uh, fashionably speaking or copies of each other. Yeah. And the uh, you know the parents, all their parents have a Abercrombie and French. Abercrombie and French. It's for a sure. commercial. Yeah. It's yeah. exactly a commercial. Yeah. yeah. Well, I went to. That's exactly. I know, it's funny you said that because I grew up with like, I grew up in a, a co-op housing mm-hmm. in Toronto here at Land, uh, Duff, Lansdowne and uh, Davenport there. Mm-hmm. So all my friends were like, no fathers, just wild fucking houses. Yep. Like older brothers beating us like mm-hmm. fucking just chaos yeah. everywhere yeah, and sure. then I go to to Newmarket and it's all like uber clean yeah everybody's yeah. but it's almost like uh, Truman Show yeah. clean you know yes. what I mean everybody's like yes. yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so I went from that to like to that mm-hmm. in uh, in Newmarket which was interesting that must have been quite the uh quite the culture shock it was quite the culture shock (laughs) because uh i was just used to i didn't see anything it was just normal for me and then i went up and i'm like where's everybody else yeah (laughs) it's just like all these just but it was interesting because the high school i went to uh basically uh catered to all the tiny towns Mm -hmm. around so you got a wide variety of interesting people I believe it. All the the hillbilly kids went to my school. Mm -hmm. So, like, all the kids who uh, had uh, snowmobiles. Oh, yes. And uh, so, yeah, I had a... a Went fishing. A couple experiences. (laughs) Yeah, growing (laughs) up. Yeah, yeah. So, I had, like, the hood hood experience as a kid. And then, like, the the suburb life of fucking around in high school. Interesting. Yeah, it was Uh, a good mix. (laughs) And then I went to North Bay for college. Good God, man. Yeah, so it was huge, like, (laughs) drastic. uh, How was North Bay at that time? North Bay was interesting because it was, like, the last few years of... Uh, before it was, um, 17 year olds were coming into college Mm -hmm. before they, uh, got rid of the OAC and it was just like mayhem. Mm -hmm. It was chaos. Mm -hmm. And it was like, um, we were like the last, uh, free spirited kids. Cause after that, they, they cracked down after that. And it was after that, it was like, if you're going to school at 17, you're not even really getting into drinking age until you're done. Mm. And, uh, even though there were some kids who were clearly alcoholics, but, Oh time. yeah. And North Bay was a real indication of that because North Bay was like, yeah, nothing to do. Drink, you drink your faces <laughs> off. I drank my face off up in North Bay. And, uh, but it was interesting because i I'm lucky. I found a friend. Uh, who was from uh, Sault Ste. Marie, actually. Mm-hmm. And we both had interest in rap. Mm-hmm. And so we decided to use all of our spare time signing out all the radio labs every Ooh, night. Nice. That's all we did. every. Cool. So we, we would get a project each week and we would blow it out within our hour. Wow. We already had it done wow. by next week. So we would go in, sign out three, four radio labs of, for four hour blocks and I would be in one room making the beat and he'd be getting his lyrics like this we were so old that we did yeah 
We were the first year of, of saw, of using saw. What's saw? So saw is like a, a nonlinear. It would be like um, logic now. Mm-hmm. Okay, or, gotcha. So before Cubase, yeah, yeah. for Fruity Loops, mm-hmm. I think Saw and Acid were like the first two programs. So we were the guinea pig year. We were the first year that went from analog to digital. Oh, interesting. So we were like, the teachers were like, try this fucking shit out. Yeah. And we had one teacher said that he's like, forget about all this shit that they're teaching you right now. It's nothing. Hmm. Learn this digital because you'll be it's left be behind the thing, if you yeah. don't fucking. But the cool, the interesting thing about that is a lot of the buttons are the same. Like these buttons yep. are all, they all go back to tape machines. They're all kind of universal, right? Mm-hmm. So, but, and that's when I learned right away that the education that you pay for is not about like marks. It's how much you can use out of it. Mm-hmm. Like use the fuck out of the gear, use yeah. the studios. So that's what we did. Like we really use the... The cameras, the rooms, mm. uh, we made our own music videos, we, nice. we, we made our own CDs, and then we had a buddy in the print uh, um, course, so we had access to all the printers at night. Mm. So we'd make our own booklets, wow. and this is when you could first buy CDs, yeah. blank CDs, so buddy had a, a zip drive, so we would transfer two songs on a Crazy. zip drive. Two at a time, that's all it held. Wow. So then we would build it up on his computer and then we burned one fucking CD at that a time on this burner. Wow. And it would just, it yep. would burn out. And then we would go to these, uh, the like the photocopy machines at, in, in the school at night and print out our booklets. Sweet. And then so we made albums and we would, we would get the DJ to play it. You and, still have them? Oh, I got, yeah, a few of them downstairs. I have them in like, in in a case very cool yeah and uh so we would barter them too for like beer or smokes uh-huh. or like anything so we that's where we started in north bay with my buddy wow rapping wow and they had like an open mic night and it was just people going up and singing songs and being blasted you know <laughs> and i was like why don't because this is long before i rapped or did anything this my buddy is the one who had the interest and he's writing yeah. songs yeah sorry i'm <laughs> no talking worries. my art ear no, our song mind. um so you like the mason jar or the cup i don't care this is real italian style Fucking nobody man. has wine glasses so he um my buddy shout out to poetical cheers salo um Ooh. Nice Italiano. How's Skin. acidic as uh, the usuals? No, it's very uh, mm. light. We'll get a wine sponsor soon, eventually. Uh, <laughs> so, um, that's not going to interfere with the focus on the camera here. No, we? man. Oh, good eye. Mm. Marcus with the <laughs> eye. Um, so he uh, he was like, I want to go on stage. One night. Yeah, why not? And I was like, do it. And I got hyped for him. Mm. I got more hyped for him. And then all day he was just like fucking stressing. Yeah, of course. Like all day. Yep. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. And then we went there and it was early. And there was too much time for him to think. Uh, and he was just like, because we went back to the dorm and we were living. There was the pub on on um, like school grounds. Mm-hmm. So it was just like a two minute walk. So he's like, ah, I'm not gonna, we're at his dorm. And I have this footage. I'm old. I got the camera on the bed. And he's on the computer. He's like, I don't know. I'm like, fucking do it, man. Yeah. I was like, do it. Nobody's doing anything like this here. It's North Bay. This yeah. is 1998. Yeah. Fucking do it. And he's, he goes up. So 1998, but, it, but, but in reality... It was more like 1988. Yeah, North Bay? <laughs> You're talking, yeah, whole fucking time warp, dude. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell's that music? Then? Yeah, exactly. It's fucking definite time warp. Are so, you still friends with him? Yeah, we're, we're, I haven't talked to him in a while, but mm-hmm. we have a long history. Yep. Um, so he went up, and I have the footage of this. From a high eight camera. Nice. He's like, yo, Alex. And he goes right into his verse that he memorized. Nice. So I'm like, that was it. And then we started doing our own shows there and stuff like that. So Fantastic. That's how it started, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Memories, eh? Memories. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, we, we came to Toronto and uh, I set up, actually, Aurora at a house, my uh, place I lived in, my buddy's place, and we set up our first studio. Nice. And like, that's when it started. And I worked with him for about, from 98 to like 2008. And then we both kind of, he didn't want to do it anymore. Mm, and it was like, away. well, I had a bigger vision, right? I had a bigger, like the whole picture. Right. Cause I was like managing him, setting up shows. Like I saw the whole thing as a rapper. Cause yeah. as a rapper, it's the whole package. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, and then I think he just, all he really wanted to do is make his own album. And we did that. And he was just kind of like, hmm, you know, really yeah. lost well, interest. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm. I want to do this. So then that's when I really kicked it up and I made that first album. Nice. And that's when I first started. Because when I first saw you scene. at like uh, Painted Lady, you, you, you know, you looked like you already kind of had something that had been there for a while. Yeah. Well, I think I met you there. I might have met you at Not My Dog maybe before. Just Entirely not possible. aware yeah. of it. You know what I mean? Like we're yeah. running the same people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that by then I think I had figured out what I wanted to do as an artist. Because mm -hmm. that's when I saw the statue and the logo. And I'm like, hey, that's my that's your thing. angle. That's yeah, yeah. my thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So Are you going to go to Italy and, and see it? or No, what? I've been there. Yeah, I've oh, done man. it. That's oh, nice. where I got it. I went, I went uh, actually, I, was on, I just started my first album. I went the first time, wrote most of the first album there, got went and saw this statue figured out like who i was as an artist and then got a photo bring it back home got an uh, artist buddy to do a rendition of it mm -hmm. and then that was it like nice and then i went five times after that so i went six times in my like 30s your legs? oh yeah yeah me too <laughs> yeah i did yeah yeah and I, I mean, think, I like traveling in general, but, but you well, know. you traveled that uh, that whole cruise. You were on a cruise, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So let's get back. So you were, you started. Uh, well, hang on. Let's oh, finish what you were talking oh, yeah. about. You were in North Bay. You would went gone to Italy. You did the the thingy uh, like with your logo. Yeah. So about. the logo be basically became my you know my thing, my identity, and now I'm like, hey, now I can run with this. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next few times I went. I really grinded it out. Like I went to a lot of cities and I promoted myself big mm -hmm. time. Like I, I found all these open mics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, met I remember this, you were talking about this one place in Montreal that uh, you had gone to. Yeah, I went to Montreal quite a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had gone to Europe, did all the Europe stuff first. And then uh, it wasn't until about eight, eight years ago I started really going around Canada. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I got to get outside of Toronto mm -hmm. and really start doing my own thing. Yeah. And that's when you really start to figure out, um, you know, your sound, I guess, and what you and your audience, like when you hit other audiences. I figured you would have gone to the States. I had. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, you know what? It's interesting because I, I work, um, a lot of professional sports, like I cover, um, like camera work. Mm -hmm. So I was asked. Uh, by the Buffalo Sabres to come do a game and dude yeah I do a lot of I've done the Leafs for a long time I've mm -hmm. done um, I've done a lot of broadcasts but when you go to the states it's like I uh, kind of have to tell a little bit of a white lie it's in the it's Be, a, in a whole nother level and they expect states. you to really because yeah. you're freelance and they don't want to pay for a green yeah. card for the day so yeah. I wasn't even thinking at all I was sleeping I didn't sleep that night I guess my conscience was kind of telling me something. Mm -hmm. And I got there and I was looked like a wreck. So I took the Greyhound and they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, well, working. And it shouldn't have been a problem, but they were so... They, they overreacted and they brought me in this room. Mm -mm. And they're like, okay, we'll just call the Sabres. And no problem, we'll let you through. Okay. And I had the contact with their logo and everything Fun. on the, the email. The guy wouldn't pick up. It was like five hour four hour window and i'm like you know i'm coming across the border at this time oh boy he just didn't pick up for like th i sat in that room for like three hours and i was like this is brutal 
Do they give you like a, something to drink or something to eat or? No. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, this is ridiculous. And then so they call a cab for you because you're, you're technically on U.S. soil now because you're yes. on the U.S. part. And they put you back on the other side. Of course. So luckily my uncle lived in Welland. Mm -hmm. He came pick me up, ex-military. Mm -hmm. So I was just fuming. Yeah. And I wrote the Sabres this, I called them and I said, this is ridiculous. This is the most unprofessional bullshit ever. Mm -hmm. this is, I went off on them. And I had a phone call like 20 minutes later from the- 20 minutes later. Yeah, the senior VP of the Buffalo Sabres apologizing. I'm like, where the fuck were you? Yeah. Like, now I'm being looked at as, as sus going across the border, you know? And now my day's ruined. Mm -hmm. And it's like, maybe I can't go back there, you know? They put me on record. And they're like, oh, it's because of all this terrorism we've had. I'm like, you're using that fucking excuse to not pay 100 bucks extra for a green card? Like, you're using... Anyway, so that, that was... I was kind of put off in that and it was all a mental fuck because I thought I would be flagged again and of I course. just I just didn't understand that it was just such a low severity thing like I thought I was doing something bad hmm. and then I just that was in the back of my mind for like four years after that well, and keep in mind the, U the US has like what 10 times the population that we do yeah right yeah and so the, I can I can understand how paranoia would become a very prevalent thing. You know, oh, big time! And the, I was deep in paranoid subjects too. <laughs> so I was like, "This is uh, I I can't go to the states," and uh, I never even really tried again. Mm. Uh, so that I started just going to to Montreal first, and then Canada and Alberta, mm -hmm. and then finally. It was like the end of 2019. Mm. I was like, fuck this shit. I'm just going to try and drive to Buffalo. And if they say no, yeah, you just I'll just back. drive back. Yeah, What's yeah. the fuck? Go for a Sunday drive. So okay. I got, I booked a gig in Buffalo. There's this place called Big Mama's House. It was like an old house they've turned into a So Buffalo. And man, is it, it was rough down there. And so, like, no paint. On the intersections where the you stop for the lights and just like you think, like no infrastructure. You know what I mean? Ooh. Like like even when you're leaving at night and there's a side street, no street lights, nothing. Like, am I in a third world country? It's like, like a, it's like a small town feel. In a yeah, but it's just like fucking Buffalo. Yeah. Like it's okay. I've heard I've heard all kinds of stories about Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. well, many parts of the states. It's yeah. like very third world. Anyways, yeah. uh, so I get there and this is the difference that i notice uh american venues to canadian venues they really appreciate musicians oh yeah in a way that you're like thank you for coming yeah up here it's different it's totally different yeah. here it's like oh same thing with europe yeah we got we got a hundred other artists who want to come and play mm -hmm. and you do everything and yeah it's the you're treated like you're a professional mm -hmm. And like what you're bringing is so much more to the bar than just people drinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they got the population, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and even in it, blew, that's what blew my mind right away. And they had no sound tech and the, the, the mixer was garbage. Mm -hmm. So I had to work through two hours of absolute shit sound. Mm -hmm. I still did it. And they were like, so sorry. Here's more money. They gave more me extra money. money. And they're like, we apologize. It's not a great night. So maybe <laughs> come back another night. And all the beers, like, I, I was being responsible. I had, well, I had American beer. So I had about five Seven. or six. <laughs> yeah, that's like three Canadian beers. So yeah. I was good. That was good. We can handle our beers. Um, so they're like, that's all in the house. Before you continue, yeah. uh, just, a, just a brief side note. Um, what was the big venue in North Bay? It was, like a, it was like a hotel kind of thing. Oh, fuck. Shit. Why do I know this? La Patrie or something like that? or There was a... Uh, Wilders. Wilders? There's one downtown that was called Wilders. Okay. There was uh, the Wall, which was the one at the college. Um... There was, oh, fuck. I know 
You know what I'm exactly talking about. Exactly what right? you're talking about, yeah. but it's like yeah. gone out of yeah. my memory. <laughs> it was probably a different name back then as well. Yeah. Compared to Anyways. When I played there, but go on. So you played in North Bay? Yeah, just once. And Me it was, too. Uh, it was it was it was kind of a shithole. Same. Yeah. <laughs> exact same. Yeah. Because we uh, one one um, uh, one particular highlight of that particular gig that I remember is the. Uh, we did this version of uh, Fat Bottom Girls. Yes. And uh, and we we were all singing, right? We, we were all you know. For all you Spinal Tap people and we, out. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we did the harmonies like off the like right off the top. The no harmonies way. were just like, Mwah. like we sounded so good for the you know, in general we sounded good. But yeah. that particular song was a is a is a memory highlight of that. Uh, for did me. anybody pick up on it? The uh, audience, did they yeah. know what you were doing? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I got the impression that they were not only enjoying themselves, but appreciating the musicianship as well. Or also very relatable to the lyrics. <laughs> because I, I, won't be, I won't be coy, but I had a lot of uh, uh, girls I can nestle up to in North Bay. That was, uh, as I like to say in North Bay, uh, more cushion for the pushing. Mm. It was uh, there was a it was funny because uh, you know I could have went to London or other places. London just reminded me kind of of North of uh, Newmarket. It was very boxy, mm. suburban, and I was like, eh. And the reason why I went up to North Bay is because we went in the summer, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's fucking glorious yeah, here. Yeah, and then yeah. as soon as you get there, it's like nine thousand feet of snow yeah. dumps on you and leaves in May. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like. Man, it's easy for an average dude up here. Yeah. You know, it's like you're you're swinging for the fences and hit a home run like every night. It was like, uh, it was um, it was easy peasy mm. up in North Bay. Uh, but yeah, that was interesting, interesting times. And I, we, because we had started uh, our first show in Toronto. Actually, was the Big Bop. Oh yes, we did that. Wow. Yeah, this was like uh, two thousand. 2001, because we had graduated 2001. Not too long before it closed. Yeah, and this was the first, I think, we, yeah, we got one of the last, it was like the last summer or mm. the second last summer. Um, this young girl, she was putting together all these, um, she's like 19 years old. I was pretty impressed with how she organized it all, but she didn't under, she underestimated the unprofessionalism of rappers, right? <laughs> Thinking that everybody's going to do this on time and it's going to switch over on time. Um but anyways, we, we did that show, and uh, we decided to go back to North Bay to do a show. Mm -hmm. So we brought a friend of ours, Slankston Hughes, uh, who's a pretty veteran rapper. Slankston Hughes? Slankston Hughes, yeah. <laughs> That's, He's a That's a great name. <laughs> pretty well-known rapper from Brampton, and he went to school with Cardi and the, all Chuck Lair and those guys. Oh, heavy. He's in that mix. You, uh, you know who Langston Hughes is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, the poet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. That's where I was like, nice, <laughs> nice wordplay, buddy. Yeah, that's really uh, good, actually. So we brought him up to uh, North Bay, hmm. and he's a big dude that's not, you know, seen too much in North Bay. There's not a lot of black guys in uh, North Bay, big right? Surprise. Yeah, so <laughs> we brought our whole crew up with us, right? I'll bet they, the ladies just went absolutely oh, mad for him. Bonkers, <laughs> dude. We had another buddy. He was the he was the wrangler. He got he was the he was getting the wrangles. <laughs> Anyways, we we had uh Slangston open up for us and it was like an atomic bomb. People were like Yeah. Almost like in shock. It was too much. And people were just like almost uh, a like little when they first scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like. Ah. Yeah. So we went up there, and we we that show was good. But then the next time Ben, uh, ben and I went up on our own, and it was just shit from the beginning. How so? Well, we we went up and we stopped at this store, and this lady was just kind of weird. She was running the show, uh, the store, mm -hmm. and uh, I. In the parking lot, I backed my truck up against the wall by accident. As before we came in, it was just like I bumped it. You know? Oh, it's a bump. It was like a big, huge brick wall. Yeah. And then she was bitching at us when we got in. And then as we left, Ben's like, she feels like she put a curse on us or something. <laughs> and then we get to North Bay and everything went wrong. 
Like, what the, happened? Our buddy called us. He's like, oh, the gig's canceled. Oh, no. Like, Bro, we came from Toronto in January. And then so my car didn't work. His car didn't work. It just went bad. We ran out of gas. So we barely, like, got back on fumes. So we're like, we're never going to North Bay oh. ever again. Oh, what a shame. Like, so what was your North Bay? Uh, it was just the one gig. It was, it was a cover gig. I, and, and we played at this aforementioned yeah. hotel kind of place because we stayed upstairs. And um, I think I know where you're talking yeah. about. I just can't put my yeah, name can't on either. the name of it. Anyway. What Anyways. Do do? So um, we'll go back to... you. So you got your first gig mm-hmm. in Toronto. Um, where was that? Uh, Dave's Pizzeria. Dave's Pizzeria. So, and Sports uh, Bar. Yes. And and that became uh, 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 a, like later on a, a famous place called you know Dave's uh, uh, Dave's um, oh my god I'm totally blanking I should totally know this anyway uh, a, an acquaintance had bought the bar from the original owners from mm. when I played there and uh, and uh, and remodeled the place a bit. Gotcha. And uh, it was, uh, and it became Dave's on St. Clair. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. so I spent I a lot of time on St. Clair and Dufferin. Mm-hmm. I grew up like just down south of Davenport. There. Yeah. So I spent lots of times. I would call it Northern Italy. Yeah. And then <laughs> Southern Italy is like college. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. The, yeah, that's the disparity right there. <laughs> yeah, and like. Bloor is kind of like the, the median, yeah. the middle ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So where did it go after that, after the, the Dave's Pizzeria? Uh, it was, a, it was a, a thrown together kind of thing um, with some friends of mine yeah. from, sure, uh, from high school. And, um, and uh, we were just having fun. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but people liked us and we, we didn't even have a name for the band. That's the best. Like the, 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 the bar owner came up with the name called us Wipeout. That's awesome. <laughs> That's the way it should be, man. You're right? just giving her, and then the, the, those things come after. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's like... Um, yeah, it's too funny. So when did it first become a, a paying thing, and you're like, um, hmm, I like this. Maybe I can do this for, like, you know, um, at least the beginning, a little bit of side change. and. Oh... Uh, well, I was uh, I was doing a regular job, a uh, nine to five office job kind of thing, and it was just stealing my soul, and I had to get out. All of us, anywhere. Yeah. yeah. What age were you <laughs> at this time? Uh, fast forward, I'm, I'm like early thirties. Yeah, so it's crunch crunch yeah. time, like yeah. yeah, yeah. And so uh, I could see that you know my time at this particular job was was you know in its waning um, waning season, and. Uh, I figured, you know what? Maybe I'll try this music kind of thing, you know? See what happens. And next thing you know, <laughs> I'm doing hair on the regular. Now, I thought I was pretty good at the time. Yeah. But uh, after a few years, I, yes. I realized just how shit I actually was. Yeah. When I started playing with real professionals, I'm like, fuck, man, I better get my shit together, right? So I was in that in that uh, that weird period between when you're like you know just starting out as a gigging musician to when you're you know you know decent enough where you're getting regular gigs I mean, yeah that, that zone in between where you, the, the transition is happening but you're still trying to you're still trying to hustle and stuff yeah. like that and uh, and I was teaching of course and and uh, doing the occasional but I wasn't really thriving it was it, these were the struggle years you know the lean years, the salad days, so this, to speak. I like that term. <laughs> yeah. So and when was the... Sorry, go ahead mm-hmm. finish. Oh, just that uh, I uh, I just, you know, because I was doing it all the time, mm-hmm. right? It was all I was doing, you know, and there, there were days where I wasn't sure if I was going to get the rent paid and, and all that stuff, right? You know, open up your fridge and there's like a bottle of ketchup. You know, that's about it. Ketchup sandwiches again. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, a box of baking soda. Yeah. 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 <laughs> At least the ketchup's fresh. Right. <laughs> yeah. The ketchup's not spoiling. Packets of plum sauce. Oh. That like a hundred years old. You know, it's, <laughs> I always thought of this. When you have more condiments than food, that's when you know you're in a sure, tough, tough spot. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it was, I was, you know, just eking by and... Mm-hmm. 
And, uh, and those kinds of times, you know, come and go in anybody's life. And anyway, I started uh, doing regular gigs that were paying decent. And uh, at some point, my, my reputation was preceding me, and people were calling me for gigs. And I didn't have to hustle as much. I still had to hustle. Yeah. And then I did, uh, and then I did this tour across Canada, and that just upped my, my chops. Mm-hmm. Like, nothing will tighten up a band faster than going out on tour. Because you're expected to be, to be prepared. Well, not only that, just the constant, you know, playing at the same time, roughly the same time, every day. Yeah, or that's every a grind. other day, it, it sharpens you up really fast. And plus, the, yeah, because there's no room for error anymore. Right. Well, and you're bored from from driving the car all day, so it's the only thing you're gonna do on tour. It's the it refocuses you essentially. Yeah. Uh, and, it's, yeah, and then when I came back. That's when I really started noticing people who were, you know, at that, um, you know, beginner and intermediate stages. Mm-hmm. And I go to the old open mics that I used to frequent. You could pe- you could pick it out after I could that. Pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. This is where he needs to improve. Or yeah. This is where you know she needs to work her voice for. Yeah. You no, know, just being an observer at a at an open mic, especially if it's one that you'd been to many many times before and had been away for a little while and then when you come back it's like you're seeing it with new eyes so new ears mm-hmm. and new ears exactly so was there like you said there was a moment there like when like you toured across Canada and mm-hmm. that's when you like really that beefed you up mm-hmm. so was there like a real aha moment where you were like no no I, I think maybe it's more of like when you look back you're like yeah. oh, okay that was the moment that hindsight man. that was like okay it's wonders for you yeah, and you're like, well, now I can run with these guys. Yeah, there's. Uh, but was there was there any like specific gig where you're like, um, you know, you, you. But that's a weird question actually, because you're constantly evolving. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? There's no real aha moment where you're like, okay, hey, I'm uh, at this point. Your week has happened. It's always from time to time. It keeps coming. Yeah, just not all the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean to because it was like. I I came out with that first album and I had a bit of experience of production because I had produced Ben's album, like three of Ben's albums. So ben was your friend? Yeah, my friend. So he was a uh, he went under the name Poetical, and we did about four albums together. Mm-hmm. And I had rapped on his last album and I did I did a pretty good job. I did three verses and I was pretty happy with like my output. And boom. Then I got. It was just weird timing because at first, I when I first started recording myself, mm-hmm. I hated it because when I was a producer and an engineer, I'm just loving other people's talents yeah, of and I'm writing off that. But now when I'm doing it for myself, I'm super hypercritical mm-hmm. and I'm like, this sucks. But also, I didn't give myself any benefit of like... You're starting from scratch, dude. Yeah. So I didn't give myself any like slack of like, just ch- like do it, just do it. And you'll eventually get to a point where it's like, you'll be happy with it. So I think that was the first hurdle for myself to get over. Mm-hmm. So I had a couple pieces, I had a few instrumentals. I had a couple of things solid some stuff. Yeah. I had some good stuff. You know, uh, Andrew Frost, right? Mm-hmm. So Andrew was dating my sister forever he was with my sister for like nine years oh shit yeah Small long world. time so this is like way back and uh i had invited him to come out to the recording studio mm-hmm. for me so he helped me do like three of my tracks on my first album and we it was just one of those nights that was just grab the most awesome magical stuff so i had a good portion of the album instrumental wise done but I had still not really found like an angle of what I, how I wanted to go and write because I was just writing free form kind yeah, of yeah. just like, yeah, yeah. but I hadn't harnessed anything that was really like, okay, this is what, then I went to the G20 and I went with my friend who was like a professional videographer. What's the G20? The G20 was the incident back in 2010 when they had, they held the summit down here. It's all right. the world so leaders. Car was on fire. Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I went with like a real journalist 
who's he went to the Quebec riots and all these things and he showed me how to conduct yourself as a professional videographer news operator and he had like a, a peace shirt on his back and he was just like nice to everybody cops protesters nothing and he didn't pick a side to like rally with anybody no. he was just like i'm a journalist Observer. and i'm doing this and i'm out and he sh showed me how to conduct yourself like that so i learned a lot and i went down the second day and that's when the shit hit the fan all the stuff and because the first day the cop car burned down and then the next day was like they kicked the boots Cheers, cheers. They kicked the boost to everybody the next day, right? Mm -hmm. So I got home and this Piece of Paradise song just came out of nowhere. I just wrote it all out. Like it was, I still have the piece of paper. It's like I made like maybe 25% changes a little bit. A couple of lines I switched some words, but it was just... So I made my album and then that song became like people were knowing me for that around the city mm -hmm. and they're like oh he's a protester type of song a rapper or like political rapper and it was like then mm -hmm. like i'm just going off of what you were saying it's like I, now i'm like being playing with good artists yeah like i'm going to places where people know are, are good You're and at a level. i'm at this level now yeah. and now it's like Oh shit, I really got to work on my shit because if I'm going to hit this next level, like I didn't, because I, I only had three songs that I could really belt out, you know? Yeah. And then it's like, it's like, it's like the comparison of like a comedian going from like five minutes to 15 minutes to a half hour to an hour. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, and then I really wanted to prove to myself that I could do it all, that I was the producer and I can make it all so that my second album was really uh, the hardest album to make and also the most rewarding. Mm -hmm. And that really made me. And I was like, I can do this. So after that second album came out, I was like, okay, this is, I can do this for real. I can, I can, and I can probably put out a, a decent enough product to compete with anybody else, you know? So, um, yeah. And then, uh, I kind of Can I see that bottle. Yeah, for sure. This is our third kill. It's very nice. Yeah, I, uh, sorry, Earl, but it was for us. It was for uh, and our EM Lord. I have to apologize. He was here. He was supposed to be here for uh, episode thirty-two. What we're doing now, but oh. he came to my porch and uh, texted me, and I didn't see the text, and uh, unfortunately. We didn't get to do the episode, but we'll do another episode in the future. Um, but what is it? It's uh, it's the uh, Villapuccini. Oh, we have a sponsor. <laughs> well, I don't know. Hey, I'm man. Toscano. I'm looking into doing <laughs> sponsorship. Uh, actually, I... Um, Wouldn't be. Grazie. Yeah. I was... Um, was it Prego? Prego. Prego. <laughs> Remember Prego, the, 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 the brand or whatever? The sauce. The sauce. <laughs> they're pretty much saying, you're welcome. They're like, they're like here's our fucking sauce. You're welcome. And it could I'm be like, a family name. It could be. You're right. Could but it means you're welcome. AI pretty much. It's generated. just like, just, it's like, you're fucking welcome. And it's like, I haven't, what? Yeah, man. No, that sauce is, nah. And after you go to Italy and have like real pasta sauce, it's like, that stuff is... Yeah, I know. Well, obviously, there's no, no, no it's not competition. Good. And that me. fucking no, whatever no. they're sorry, Prego, but I gotta call you out. The fucking Parmesan, that's like wood chips. That shit. Oh yeah, that's awful. Well, it's just cheap sauce, right? It's bad. Don't say you're welcome. It's this. It's, <laughs> it's this uh, generation's uh, Catelli, <laughs> right? That's what it is. <laughs> or I like to say like the holy chow, you know? Of, yeah, uh, sure. Of, or, yeah, Chinese food, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> Let's go generic, folks. We're going all generic hour here. <laughs> so when I met you, it was a, a painted lady, I believe. I, like mm -hmm. we said earlier, I probably met at Not My Dog. 
which is uh, was an iconic little um, hole in the wall in Parkdale. Yeah. Which was pretty amazing. It was like you never knew what you were gonna get that it was some night. Special moments. It was some special moments mm-hmm. that like fleeted so quickly, and yeah. it that place really showed me that. Um, music is music and it doesn't matter as long as you present it in a way that you're fully passionate about Mm -hmm. you know and it's musical like it's It's obviously you've you've done something musical with it but it's like it was the most accepting place and it was like the most uh, unassuming place at the same time too Mm -hmm. and it was like it was the, it was like the meetup place. It was I met I met most of the musicians that I jam with now from there, and uh, it was cool. It was a cool spot to go. That's I first started going there. Really, that was like the press room was the first one I went. Mm-hmm. Press club. Press club. Sorry, on Dundas, and there's an A two that I worked with. Uh, this guy, um, I can't remember his name. Sorry, buddy. Gord. Gord. He's in Winnipeg now. But he uh, he's in a band, and he says, like, you got to come to this open mic thing. So I went, and that was the first one I went. And then I went to Not My Dog, and I went to Axis. And then, uh, yeah, Not My Dog was interesting because I had started my second album. And I was like, oh, I need these type of musicians. Mm-hmm. And I went in. And I needed a flute player, and I met Wayne. Wayne Young. So I was like, hey, would you want to come to my place and do some recording? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. So, and he lives nearby? Or something yeah, like well, I was down. I was at downtown at this time, and so I got him to come to my place downtown. We were just talking about Toronto and kind of growing up in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I grew up in uh, Dufferin and Davenport, and I went to uh, Hawthorne at Christie the French immersion school mm. and he's like so did my son and I was like who's your son he's like Spencer dun, dun, dun. and I'm like how many fucking Spencers do you know like a billion billions you know I'm Spencer too <laughs> no it's like and I'm like shut up my mom's shut and he's like so me and his son were friends in public school oh wow I call my mom and she sends me a photo of my eighth birthday, and he's his son's in it with me. Fucking and man. I was like, "This is so cool. This place, it's like so much more. It was so much more than music. It was just like a way of thinking freely. Mm-hmm. And then I think what it did was like whatever you were um, wanting to do musically, it kind of just led you to meeting those type of people mm-hmm. there." You know what I mean? And I met Narani there, who's a beautiful singer. Narani, I haven't heard, I, what happened to her? She went back, she to, went back to Africa. Okay. Her visa ran out and stuff like that. So, And I think uh, she didn't get into a school that she tried to get into. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I met her there. So anybody that's like involved in any of my mm-hmm. production, I've all met there. For example? Um, well, Wayne. Right. Narani. And, uh, oh, I met these two young guys there. They didn't end up recording anything with me. They're from Edmonton. Oh, yeah? And I was, I got my first gig at Tennessee in Parkdale there. Right, right. And it was the first time I was, the second time I was going to have a band. So I was finally going to put... Wait, this is before it was Missy's sister? Yes. Or This is like 2014. So this is like 10 years ago. Oh, definitely. So definitely before that. So it was like Tennessee second phase or third phase. I don't know. Well, Mitzi's sister and then Tennessee. Yes. So, so it was, used to be, I think it used to be called Tennessee back in yes, the 60s or something like exactly. that. Exactly. So it was like actually three, four phases or whatever. Mm. Anyways, we can't keep open park too. And then it was Tennies. Yes. It's and been through a lot. That, that closed down. In fact, I was, I was, uh, my band was the, the last band that they had. Before no they way. Yeah. I remember when I came in and you guys were playing one night. You and, uh, Josh. Josh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so... I played, a, I played a gig with him last night, actually. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. I sent him to this place in uh, Godrich. Mm-hmm. This place. Uh, Godrich. It's like a hotel. Uh-huh. 
uh-huh. Bedford Hotel. And it's like... Yeah, Bedford. I played there. Yeah, yeah. you played there? Yeah. yeah. Talk to this guy, John. I wasn't the booker. I was oh, okay. Anyways, this I was guy, just he does... bass player. Oh, so he books. I can send you his info. Yeah. Thanks. So they do a hotel, too. So they'll put you up in a hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm learning to do that a lot better, too. Like, to get gigs with accommodations and oh, absolutely. stuff like that. It's... Uh, it's, Unless you're a man about town, you you know people. So let's talk about that. Do you need a little break or? No, I'm, uh, I'm gonna break this out. Yeah, man. Maybe we can do like a rap or something. Yeah. Um, when was the first time you really like um, you went on the road and you had to like really uh, cover your own expenses? Um. Well, I mean, you're always covering your expenses, but yeah, the, uh, like overnight, you know, to find a, to to find a place to live. Yeah, I'm pretty good across Canada. States might be a different story, although I'm sure I have cousins. Um, Europe for sure. I do have enough times to know. Well, this might be a little out of tune. All right. First time on the Focus Podcast. <laughs> live tonight. Fuck it, we'll do it live. There's no time. My friend actually sang the um, national anthem for the game today. Nice. Leah. She's on my album. Friend from Montreal. Sorry, Leah? Leah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Leah mm-hmm. Keeley. What should we talk about? What well, I was uh, about to uh, mention, uh, like, ask you about your songwriting and, and how, how the process oh. works about that. Let's, why don't we do a little freestyle about it? <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, at least I'll try. It's the writing process. A lost art. I sit back, imagination sparks. Glide on the tradition, my mind's on a mission. Sold out to the words and the vision. No need permission, asking new decisions. To let it go with no witness No one's around, no voices, no sound Turn it up profound Feel it inside, deep vibe You know it's alive when you gotta write it down Lightning in a bottle Strive for the best, full throttle Get it, mission Wishing Early morning fishing, getting in the grind, getting in the vision. Every day I put in the work, it's the mind, thought, dispersed. Every day an hour of writing, every day an hour of reading, every day breath exercise, every day you're feeling alive. Then the writing comes out from a birth, it's Born for what it's worth, and you capture it, write it all down. Very few words that need to be turned around. You know it's the one, you circle it, great, it's a prize, and it's never too late. So write it down. That's the writing process. That's sick, yo. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much like you have to know your rhythms and like mm-hmm. your. Roger hit it for me good. He's my guy who plays a lot of my guitar and piano, and he said, "Lightning in a bottle, you gotta grab it." It's like, gotta grab that idea, mm-hmm. then you can 
flourish with it later you know that's the main component of it and uh it's also like i've i've really like pushed myself to be perfect with the sound but it's also like you want to capture as much as the moment as possible you know what i mean yep. like so what's your writing process like is there do you write a track first or do you just do you go straight um, raw to the pen or do you typically a melody will come to me mm -hmm. or or a, or a, or a form of some type mm -hmm. you know verse chorus or a, or a bridge chorus or whatever there's usually one piece of the puzzle that still needs to be solved and that's really where the focus because the the idea is already the genesis of the idea the germ if you will yeah is, is already established or at least part way kind of have a, a general direction of which way uh, to go yeah so um so i would say about two-thirds of the song is finished at that point and then i'll work on it for like a, a couple of hours mm -hmm. and i'll have a basic outline of how the song goes and then I might work on it again, you know, a couple of days later, tighten it up a little. Yeah. But typically after a week or a few days, it's pretty much done. You're efficient. I'm <laughs> fucking procrastinator as fuck on songs. We all are. Yeah. And it's, I really do it kind of in chunks because it's like when you, uh, you, you don't, you don't play music. So like I don't play any instruments. So it's like a build for me. Right. So it's like, I'm just as a producer, really. So I'm just kind of taking these drums and taking this bass and editing this and getting a loop with, with bridges or it's already a piece as itself and I'm taking away. It's different processes each time, but it's a slow method. But once <clears throat> like I have four or five at a certain spot, then it becomes something. Mm -hmm. then it's like now I have almost an EP and it becomes alive and it's like everything else I'm just adding to it and it becomes this album out of nowhere so it's I'm in that process right now which is exciting again because it's like all that practice you put in and all that daily work it's just like now it's just kind of flourishing and you gotta like take it you gotta jump on it and uh, so yeah you just came out with an album, did you not? Or I did. Yes, I know that. Uh, when was well, it again? It, it was last year, but uh, but yeah, it's still it's, pretty uh, recent. Yeah, it's the latest. When was it again? When was what? When did you release it? Last summer. July. Mm -hmm. Nice. So happy anniversary <laughs> to that. Yeah. Right. And how many tracks were on that again? The nine. Nine. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'll find the. Um, the art piece and I'll put a link on here and uh, throw it up on the end here mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, yeah play another tune and just just uh, one more question mm -hmm. uh, before you play um, what's on the, sh the schedule what do you what, where are you when and where are you playing I am playing uh, Wednesday every Wednesday I uh, co-host an open jam down at uh, Capone's on uh, Bloor, just west of Dundas. Bloor and Dundas, okay. Yeah. Capones. Um, Thursday, I'm part of this uh, uh, solstice um, cabaret kind of thing, but it was more like a you know poets in character and disguise. Oh, nice. And uh, that's up at uh, Weston and the Saint Clair. Nice on the twentieth. On the Thursday, yeah. Nice. Uh, Saturday, I'm playing bass for the Russell Leon Band at the Dakota. Mm. It's an early show. Nice. Seven o'clock. Nice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, I'm playing at Penny's, my, my own original band. Uh, Penny's on um, the first Friday in July. Nice. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And are you out of town uh, much this summer? Or are you? Uh, so far, no, but it usually kind of happens it at some point. Yeah. So I'm not too concerned yeah and it's always nice to get out of the city yeah it is a little once in a while to uh, a little uh, dip in and out 
Yeah. Um, yeah, play us a little track. Uh, so this is, um, this is called, what is this called? It's called Time of Day. It's the first track on my latest release. Yeah, man, I remember hearing you uh, and always remembering, like, man, you got a unique style, unique voice. Thanks, man. Yeah, man, very distinct. And uh, and I, I, went to, I started going to the Grossman's there back in uh, 2016. Because mm-hmm. when I had met Wayne, he's like, come here. And you want to talk about, like, building up your chops, right? And I was like, okay, now I understand uh, trying things, mm-hmm. pushing yourself. Yeah. So I'm like, now I need to learn new songs. So I'm like, this band has no idea what I'm doing. So why don't I just like throw myself in there and try it with the live band? And that's when I really, really like sharpened my skills nice. was like doing that, that open mic there. And I remember you showing up all the time and it was like fucking awesome jam night. And then yeah. you brought it to another level and it, it was like cool. You, it was like you were, uh, it was a nice surprise you dropped in all the time. And people were like, oh yeah, Mark is nice. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, uh, it's good memories being uh, just kind of like... Uh, finding this open mic and this open mic through the city and just like finding this place and this place and like this fits and um, yeah no I'm glad I experienced a lot of that through uh, you know Kensington a lot of the spaces in there and 
but it's fun. And I always, every city I went to, I always tried to find an open mic somewhere. Like every, every place in Europe, every place in the States. It was a pleasant surprise. Eh? Everywhere in the Caribbean I went, I did mm-hmm. too. Always a pleasant surprise. And almost better than gigs sometimes. Yeah. Like I went to uh, one in Paris and I met a guy from Parkdale there. What? The first night I ever went to and yeah, it was a buddy. And they introduced me as the fuck fuckus. Fuckus come to the stage. So I go and I did my Peace of Paradise song and they're like, that is very nice. We like to riot to that song. <laughs> and uh, it was about the protests, right? So people in France Paris really liked it. <laughs> Ooh, nice. And uh, so I met this guy and he's like, yeah, I'm from Toronto. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, I'm from Toronto too. And he goes, I'm like thinking whereabouts. I'm like, I bet she's going to say fucking Parkdale. <laughs> sure uh, any money. And he's like, I'm from Parkdale. I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, so he's like, you got to come to this place on Wednesday. Cause I had showed up on the Monday. He's like, you got to come to this place on the Wednesday. So I go to this place on the Wednesday and it's like, across the street from Notre Dame Church. It's like down the street from Shakespeare's bookstore. And it's like, oh, I go to this place and it's got like a like a cavern it's fucking from the year 900, you know? So it's like old and I've never experienced anything like that. So it's like, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna rap. So, oh, you're going to rap, okay. But I waited, like, it was a long line. Like, I waited, like, four hours. I was there at, like, 1 a.m. And then I finally did it, and people were pretty happy with it. Nice. And, yeah, I did it all around Europe, and that was fun. And I did a few in the Caribbean, which was kind of fun. You, when I met you at uh, Painted Lady, uh, I remember you got the job on a cruise. So you were a musician on a cruise for a bit. I was. How long did that go for? That was a... um, my first ship contract was in 2012, um, and I went back a couple of times, and then I did a really long one in 2016 mm-hmm. for six months. Mm-hmm. I um, I have some. Is that cover like cover stuff they were that you're really doing there? Like the they? Do oh yeah. They ask yeah, that's all you're doing, right? Yeah. It's like that's what originals it really? Yeah. No. <laughs> No, yeah, no, I wouldn't think so. Uh, what are you gonna do, man? Yeah, you just gotta do what you do. Yeah. Well, the, this was the thing too, because um, the uh, a lot of the, the the people, the guests, the passengers were uh, were Brits. Mm. Um, you occasionally get, to, I, I would say, about like twelve percent German. Yeah. Um, some Ukrainians. Italians for sure. Um, not too many French, interesting mm-hmm. enough. But a lot of Brits. Yeah, they travel. Yeah. They get off that island. Well, I've also done the Caribbean, and it's mostly Americans there. Mm. So it's kind of a true um, a geographic thing. Yeah, well, I was in Nassau at Christmas, and so mm-hmm. all Americans. Yeah. That's close by, you know? Yeah, it's a quick skip over there. It's like, if you're in Florida, it's probably like, what? It's like a 20-minute flight. It's, it's also, a, it's like southern Spain. For the yeah, people, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the thing that blew me away from, well, we're just like used to long distances in Canada and Ontario. We get over to Europe and it's like two hours. See you later this afternoon, <laughs> you know? Yeah. When I took that, uh, the Euro, the Euro line, I can't remember what it's Where'd called. You Eurolink, it's like from London to Paris. Mm-hmm. Two hours. You went through the channel. The channel. Nice, how was it? Just phew, fast. <laughs> fast, you're like underground and in Paris. Yeah. It's crazy. Nice. It's insane. And then uh, I did the speed one in from France to Bordeaux, which was like in uh, two hours. So that one was a trip because you're leaving Paris and it's like 18 rainy and I get there yeah. it's like 38 Caribbean. Bordeaux's on the uh, southern 
West Coast. Yeah, so it's not That's, quite yeah. the Mediterranean, yeah. but it's like... It's the Bay of Biscayne. Yeah, you're getting into Spain, and, and uh, so it's tropical. And I was there in the summer. It was hot. Yeah. Uh, and then I went... Uh, the fastest one is in uh, Italy now. Which you go from you can go Italy? from Rome. yeah it has the slowest and the fastest yeah you can go from Rome to uh, I went to Verona so you stop in uh, uh, Bologna and it's three and a half hours mm -hmm. that's like half the country yeah. just it's three hundred and twenty five kilometers an hour it's just yeah it's Rome to Bologna was like two hours and. It was pretty quick. It's pretty amazing. And here it's like Toronto to Montreal, five hours. Mm -hmm. Have you taken the train in the States? Uh, I've been in the States in quite some time. Oh, okay. I took Amtrak in the States and I'm like, oh, this is equally as shitty as Via. <laughs> well, there's a lot more land to cover, I understand. What are you gonna do? <laughs> you know. Curious when. Um, who, who are some of your, uh, your like, uh, like painted lady favorites? Oh, I was just gonna ask you. Who do you remember who are big stars now big from stars. Painted Lady? And that's funny. You just like took it right out of my brain. <laughs> that's fucking insane. Cause I remember Jeremy. Jeremy Albino, mm -hmm. he's massive now. Is he? And he was like, when, because that's when I first met you, I think when Nelson first started kicking it up on the Mondays there. Mm -hmm. And that I first started going that first year. And he was one of the guys regular there. And he's a massive star now. Like he went to the States and did the country way. The Nashville thing. Yeah. So and he's, country? Yeah, he's big. And um, yeah, if you... Pull him up, you'd know, recognize him right away. Mm -hmm. And does it uh, still go by Jay Albino? Yep, Jeremy or Jeremy, mm -hmm. Jeremy Albino, Albino. Yeah, um, but he used to always big up me. Like he used to every time I get off the stage, he was like, that "Awesome shit!" Like he was encouraging me a lot mm -hmm. every time I tried something new or did something different or freestyled or just kind of like, you know. Uh, you know, push, push, you know, when you push yourself on stage, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he was a favorite of mine. He was cool. And definitely um, our buddy Evan, Evan Pang, Ace and Abby. Like, mm -hmm. he's, and I, I'm like, that's my homie. That's like, he, him and I, I started doing some, sh a lot of shows with him, like showcasing. Because when I first started showcasing, I asked him all the time mm -hmm. to do it with me. And then we had did one just before the lockdown. And then him and I used to go to cough, get coffee here all the time at Woodbine. We were hanging out all the time. And uh, he asked me to shoot some video for him. Because he's like, you do video professionally. He's like, you're a cam professional camera op. And... He had get, he was part of this uh, program where um, indigenous artists were given like an iPhone 12. Yeah. And he's like, I want to great do time a, to be an indigenous like, artist. And he's like, I want to do it legit too, right? So he uh, had a gimbal, and so I did like this nice shots for him, like on the beach, like the sunrise over here, because we used to go meet up there for coffee. It was lockdown. There's nothing to do, so. Um, yeah, we would get together a lot and he and did a bunch of these really nice, cool videos for him. And he was giving me cash, so I was like, I had no money at the time. So he was paying me. That was great. Like 150 bucks to shoot, you know, like you know, half an hour of stuff. And uh, so we would shoot the shit and then we would talk. And he said to me, uh, uh, he was like, oh. Cause he was get, I think he was still trying to do the band thing, and he was like, "Oh, I'm not sure about this. Uh, kind of want to do solo stuff." And I was like, "Just do what you want to do, man." Mm -hmm. I was just like, "You're the artist. It's your train. It's your story." Well, he was having uh, problems with 
some band members that well sing? I don't want to say anything uh, but he was just like uh, he wasn't happy with it. it was well those people weren't seeing what he was seeing right mm-hmm. And then uh, he started telling me about, uh, he called his grandfather and he found out his grandfather was part of these residential schools. And so he started having a lot of long conversations with him. Mm-hmm. And then I think how he really found like his identity, like he found his like ancestry, like mm-hmm. he found about a lot more about him, about himself, right? And then, so I think he, I think that's where he came up with the, the new name, Ace and Abbey. And then, uh, so I remember talking to him through all of this process. And then uh, all of a sudden he wrote this song, Ocean Breeze. And he's like, what do you think? So I was like, this is fucking amazing. Like he did all this, he did all the production himself. And then uh, he had the, the gimbal and that still again. And then so he, um, we picked like he picked a bunch of places for us to shoot. Like we went to Woodbine with the stage. Mm-hmm. So it's on the YouTube, but I, like, I showed him how to shoot a little bit too. So he did a whole version for me. Like I did one of my songs and I did one of his songs. Nice. We did like two. Of, and then we went to, uh, uh, Ontario place where it's all shut down. We went into where the roller coaster used to wait in line there. So we shot like a little video in there too. And now I was happy to help him like shoot something that he was visioning you know what i mean and then he just blew the fuck up like he just exploded and i've seen i saw him a couple of times i saw him uh i went to see his record release open uh at the rivoli and then i saw him on on in front of lee's palace one night just ran into him but i gotta i gotta get him on the pod here i gotta but he was actually on the po- the original of this podcast. He's on the fourth episode. Nice. Yeah, when it was just uh, microphones. You see him, tell him I said hi. I will. I will. So there's two of me. How about yourself, Pain and Lady? Uh, celebs. Um, or uh, faves. Who was the drummer? I'm totally blanking on her name. She had darker skin, kind of curly hair. Oh, Zainab. Zainab, yeah. It's Damn. funny, she's, uh, she stayed here. No shit. Yeah, she's <laughs> slept in this room here. <laughs> yeah, she's, because uh, she reached out online about, because she's been uh, staying in uh, Australia over the lockdown. She lived in, she moved to Australia. Wow. So she uh, was putting, you know, you just randomly somebody see somebody post something online. She's like, I need a place to rent. Da, da, da. And I was like, this is when uh, somebody was living here in May last year and it didn't work out. And I'm like, I'm fucked. If I don't get somebody here, I'm gonna. So I had her and her, our boyfriend came and they stayed here for like a couple weeks. Awesome. And, I, and then, so I be, had this idea of like this place of being uh, like an Airbnb for artists. So I kind of that. And now. How's your insurance? It's good, but I have to be home for it. <laughs> it's under covers me. But uh, I now I really think I'm just gonna keep this room as a this you know podcast uh, area. But it's funny she just messaged me before you came here, and because uh, she was coming <laughs> back here, and uh, needs we a were, place to crash. Well, yeah, I was, well she was looking for a place to rent. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a couple of days and I was like yeah because I might be going on tour so that's great yeah that's funny you brought her up that's hilarious mm-hmm. yeah so and I talked to her about being a, being a guest here she says she's down so in a future episode we'll see you here but that's funny Just, <laughs> that's hilarious and she uh, she did some drumming for uh, uh, Narani we were talking about yes um, Narani she was like one of the only other folks at um, Not My Dog that smoked weed regularly and as heavily as me. And I'm like, I think she was like 21 at the time. And I was like, You're right? Yeah, she was young. This is like 10 years ago. She was right. really young. And, but she just seemed like, like an older veteran musician, artist, you know? And, uh, 
we used to fucking haul fucking cannons like in the, that back area and and not my dog yeah <laughs> so she, she started hanging out and we uh we used to smoke a lot of weed together and uh i was writing all these hooks and i'm like these are fucking good hooks but i can't do them justice it's like i want somebody to really really sing them and so she read some of my stuff when she was over and she's saying like these hooks and i was like this is a huge dynamic for me. And then I started getting her to come out and do live with me too. So I'd have the backing tracks, you know, Wayne and her like doing vocals. Yeah. So, and I'm glad I did it because it was like, she, I'm sure she's that helped her as an artist, you know, as a young artist to get on all these stages in Toronto, you know? And uh, she did pretty well. She was doing good for a youngster and she like held her own, filled the room with that voice. She was strong. And uh, yeah, her and I have been in touch still. And uh, yeah, oh, she was, nice I will, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, she was, she's cool. She, she, um, she gave my album like a different edge to it. Like it gave it that, like reading somebody else's thoughts, you know? Yep. Almost. It was cool. It was kind of cool. I I remember Narani uh, like you know fronting the uh, vocally the uh, this band of like seven guys. At, yeah. At the Pain Lady and just the sound came off the stage like a like, like a, a wall, man. like a yeah. fucking wall. Yeah. She fucking would take the air out of the place, yeah. man. Yeah. And I was like almost like Nina Simone it was so strong it was just like powerful yeah. and also that I can never I don't know who the singer was ever but on what is it Great Big Gig in the Sky Pink Floyd Floyd that portion the singer yeah yeah Great Gig in the Sky I was like yeah she could fill that that type of volume and I was like that's where I don't know she seemed like a mature artist and that's like yeah, we didn't she record some stuff with Troy Larrabee? And- yeah, she did. She did a couple of stuff, and I sent her to my uh, engineer's place in uh, mm-hmm. Brampton to do some stuff. Um, but she was cool. We used to hang out, and she was just getting into photography, so she would just like uh, do some test shots of me and stuff like that. And so I had my first kind of like uh, headshots or whatever, nice. you know. So I was like, that's when I started. You know, I got to mix in the photos with everything and start doing the whole everything, you know? Got to schedule, do your shows, keep up social media, the whole juggle, you know? The whole kit caboodle. The whole kit caboodle. Um, yeah, man. It's fun. I enjoy this. This is, uh, this is what kind of why I wanted to do this is like... Uh, it almost like a, an extended idea of what Not My Dog was, you know what I mean? Like a place where local artists can um, resource from each other, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And also the bigger span of it too is like with touring and doing shows across the country is like... Uh, knowing people for accommodations and and like you know rides and stuff like that it's like uh, the more we're networked in this country the more uh, we can grow as uh, indie artists and make a semi living you know I almost think of it as the way as like uh, uh, podcast help the indie uh, comics how like out of it you didn't really need um, to do the sitcom anymore or Jerry Seinfeld the coffee and cars or no I'm just saying like podcasts in general like like this you know just general like an extension of yeah exactly Mm -hmm. yeah but it was like that helped them so much more Mm -hmm. in such a way and I feel like these type of platforms are going to help indie music artists you know what I mean I hope so in a way I hope so too so 
Anything you want to add? Um. Yes. Yes, please. Oh, I need to confirm the date. Huh? I'm pretty sure it's uh, it's the first Friday in July. I'm pretty sure. Almost positive. Yes. So it's July fifth. Mm. July fifth at Pennies. Pennies. Um, Mark's Walker Quartet, acoustic, uh, is doing um, a show at Pennies. Nice. Uh, with Blackout Orchestra opening. Very nice. Nice. Yeah, man. Cheers. Cheers, man. <laughs> Thanks for coming by, man. This is fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. Any uh, vacation plans? Any out of out of town trips? Uh, yes, not before. And uh, again, uh, I can't think of anything that's immediately in the future. Uh, however, I'm sure it will happen at some point this summer. Something more material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even really, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's at that point where I have enough friends who who go out of town during the summer, and you know, there's always one company. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of Come on. Come on the road. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I've been doing the last couple of years. It's like, it's, it's nice traveling with just one good musician. One Damn. good, one good artist. You know what I mean? Like one, if you're touring, it's, it's good to tour with almost like, uh, one other good solo artist that could, you like two of you can cover a whole night, you know? Oh yeah. And, uh, it's almost like you can do e- like as much equally like you do one hour and I do one hour and I'll switch it up the next yeah. night yeah. and uh, I did that with Dr. Keys all last year mm-hmm. him and I uh, we, we hit everywhere in southern Ontario every rough armpit Marathon. oh fuck dude we went to some places that I'll never go back again <laughs> and we got some quotes motherfucker holy shit Sioux Lookout. Oh, dude. Sioux Lookout. I'll, I have another story about the Sioux. Not Sioux Lookout, but I know of Sioux Lookout. I know exactly when people say it like that. I know exactly what's going on. Sioux. So I went with my friend, Ben. He's from uh, Sault Ste. Marie. St. Mm-hmm. Joseph Island, actually. Mm-hmm. like So, bigger hick. On the... Um, on, uh, Superior or something? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's a huge fucking island off just like on the shades of the US border. Uh, anyway, so we go up there, me and my buddy Cal uh, and uh, his best friend. Uh, my friend who lived up there, he's not feeling well, so he's ill, he's out for the night. So the three of us, you get in this taxi that takes you on the, the, Sioux, the US suicide. The, Sault Ste. Marie side. So it takes you over the border and you get to party because all the good bars are on the U.S. park, right? Of course they are. So you go get hammered there and then it takes you back at like 3 in the morning. So we all go there and... Uh, what if I go for smoke? Yeah. Hold on, we'll just me? pause it one sec. Oh, I thought we were... Or let me... To... I'll just wrap this up. Okay. I'll just wrap this up right. for the story. Quick. Um, so I'm wearing this shirt and it has a girl's bikini bottom... And a picture of George Bush. And it says, good Bush, bad Bush. <laughs> and I'm like so young. I saw a Talib Kweli wear it, actually. Who? Talib Kweli. Who's the he? old uh, hip-hop artist. You know, most deaf? Yeah. Like his counterpart. Okay. He was like... Anyways, he had a t-shirt. I, I bought it. Anyways, we went to uh, go across the border at Sioux, Sioux Michigan here. And they saw us in the, the cab and they pulled us into the garage. So came out, they saw my t-shirt. They were not happy with this. Made me take off the fucking t-shirt. Made you take off the t-shirt? Yeah. Maybe? Come on, man. They intimidated me. <laughs> and uh, It's just a t-shirt. I know. I was like, chill the fuck out. <laughs> he was pissed. He was pissed. What was so, he pissed about? Because it was funny. Because it was funny? Yeah. He, he said... How dare you disrespect our leader like that? And I was like, oh, leader? I was so like, was oh, yeah, I, yeah. I see. Yeah. It's yeah. one of those. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, no, not necessarily. 
He probably meets people like you all the time. Well, it, all the time, and I antagonize it one hundred percent, one thousand percent. I was like, "There's no way I would do that now because I don't feel like mm-hmm. the hassle." So that was the story. So that's Sioux, Michigan, for me. Mm. Anyways, on that note, let's wrap it up. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man. Appreciate Thanks it. Me on. Number thirty-two, Marcus Walker. This is the Focus Podcast. Thank you for watching. Salud. Salud.